I did an episode recently on advice for the shy photographer. The reason I did so is because I'm actually a shy photographer myself. I've been doing this for three decades, literally 32 years. And in that 32 years, one thing that I've learned is my camera, my camera is actually a bridge. It's a bridge between me and my shyness. It's a bridge between me and those people that I want to photograph, those people that I'm too shy to, to talk to. Because really, because I'm such a shy person, I've actually developed a whole career in spite of my shyness. I'm a photographer. I've been doing this forever and I shoot people, but I'm shy. My last episode on advice for the shy photographer got a lot of attention and I thought it would be cool if I did almost like a part two because people are shy and that 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 podcast got a lot of attention. I realized that people need help with their shyness. People need help breaking through that barrier and I got to tell you, if you can break through that barrier of shyness, the world is your oyster. I managed to break that shyness barrier using my camera somewhere in and around 17, 18, 19. I started taking pictures when I was 14. And when I was 17, I got contact lenses and, um, I mean, I have thick glasses. I've been wearing glasses since I was eight. So my I have Coke bottle glasses. I wear contact lenses, so I look cool. <laughs> I got contacts when I was 17, and that was the beginning of people actually noticing me. People noticing me, and I also had been shooting photographs for like four years. I realized quickly that my camera was a bridge to being able to talk to people, to be able to talk to pretty girls. Oh my God, you're pretty, can I take your photo? I wanna be a fashion photographer. My camera became a bridge. So the number one thing that you can do to help you break out of your shyness, I'm gonna make some notes today. The number one thing that you can do to help you break out of your shyness is building trust. That's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to build trust as a creator. And when we're new, when we're shy, building that trust is something that is difficult. The foundation of any meaningful relationship is trust. Trust is paramount in photography. And it's not just about getting your subjects to pose, but we're trying to get our subjects to let their guard down, you know? For a shy photographer, it's essential for us to help people reveal their authentic self. But for a shy photographer, it often means nonverbal cues, listening, empathetically listening the way us shy photographers do and having patience. You know, I have to tell you, I'm not a street photographer. You look at people like Saul Leader, Alan Schaller, Jay Maisel, I, I'm definitely not a street photographer. I'm a portrait photographer. And my portraits are set up. It's set up by an art director. There's a set time. They know that I'm coming to make the photographs and photographs happen. But I use street photography in order to battle my shyness and to battle my social anxiety. And how I get to the point of building trust is by being confident when I approach someone. And I always lead with a compliment. Leading with a compliment is the quickest way to get somebody's attention. If you're shy, we're, sh we're observers and it makes it so we can actually notice the nuances. 
speaking of noticing the nuances, our next really important note is the power of observation. The power of observation. As a shy photographer, that's the one thing that we have on lock. We observe. If you're a shy photographer, you are probably a shy kid and know that that's why you're a photographer is because of your power of observation. Our eyes are our most potent tool. Shy individuals, we often have the ability to, it's like an innate ability to observe and notice nuance that other people often overlook. That silent observation can lead to capturing moments that are genuine and raw and profound. I've always been an observer. When I was a kid, my mom would say like, you notice the most strange things. I would say, mom, look how the wind is blowing through the leaves and the leaves are like dark on one side and they're light on the other side. So when the leaves are flickering like that, it looks like there's lights. And she'd say like, it's amazing how you notice these things, these everyday things. My observational skills paid a pivotal role in me becoming a photographer. And that happened because I wasn't usually talking. I was usually observing. So another real weapon of the shy photographer is actually embracing your shyness. We have to embrace our shyness. We have to embrace it. While many view shyness as a limitation, it actually can be a strength. A shy photographer can tap into depths of emotion and sensitivity that other people might not access that readily. This vulnerability can translate into photos that resonate deeply with viewers. I embrace my shyness and, and really I, I hadn't talked much about how shy I was, um, on this channel because to most, I seem extroverted. I seem like I am not a shy photographer or a shy person at all. I have a YouTube channel, I make videos, I talk on camera, but I have to get it across to you all that all of this is learned behavior. I learned how to do this. I learned how to embrace my shyness. I learned how to use my camera as a bridge. A shy photographer can tap into emotions and sensitivity that other people don't can't access quite as readily. And that vulnerability, it translates into photography that resonates deeply with the viewers. We see things different as shy photographers. Embracing shyness is is a thing. And for me, battling it is doing street portraits and asking strangers for photographs. So, and also admitting when you ask somebody for a photo, I'm really shy. This is really hard for me to ask you. I'm really shy. It was really hard for me to stop you just now. Embracing your shyness. You can actually use it as a weapon. So another really important thing that we have to do in order to really excel at battling our shyness is we have to really master the basics. Mastering the basics is 
I mean, if you're trying to be a photographer, you have to master the basics. And if you're trying to shoot portraits, if you're trying to do street photography, you're trying to be out in the world, if you're trying to shoot people, you got to master your camera. Mastering the basics of your camera is god it's not just about the emotional connection that we get with our subjects it's an art and science we have to master basic technical skills with our camera when we do that we create a safety net for ourselves when we're in control of our equipment and our techniques it's one less thing to worry about when we're walking around the streets with our camera if you're shy learn your camera learn exposure learn shutter speeds learn iso learn focus when you like one thing about me when i do do sh um to street photography one thing that i'm not limited by is the basics of photography i'm not limited by using my camera i'm not limited by how fast i change the focus point come up with the idea that happens really quickly. So that kind of technical expertise makes it so once you break through the barrier of actually asking a stranger for a photograph, you your technical expertise can turn that into a beautiful photograph. So let's talk about another way. We can leverage technology. Beyond cameras and lenses, we can, we can leverage technology in order to help us be better as shy photographers. Let me just write leverage technology. We can leverage technology. And I'm going to tell you how. Technology has revolutionized photography. Beyond cameras and lenses, we have apps. We have software that can assist with communication and visualization. A shy photographer might find some solace in using these tools that communicate a vision even before a word is spoken, easing potential stress points. So how would you do that? How would you leverage technology? Well, easy. The first thing I would do is I would open my website and just pass my website to them and say, this is me. That's me using technology to showcase what I do with the camera, even if I don't speak very well, even if I'm shy. You could open Instagram and say, this is me. I make photos. Here. You, even if you don't speak a language, I've photographed people who don't speak English on the street just by passing them my phone, just by showing, opening an app and showing them my photography. Our voice comes through our photography style. So another way that we can battle shyness is actually by diving inwards and diving into our camera and really focusing on developing a signature style. Our style is how we see with the camera. Much like we all sign a check completely differently, how we take photos, how we see with our camera is also completely different. Our style is like our voice with our camera. For a shy photographer, that voice is often introspective, deep, and reflective. Discovering and nurturing that voice as a shy photographer can become an anchor in your style and help you navigate through the incredibly varied assignments that you would be getting as an, a portrait photographer and help you execute your shoots with a clear vision. My style 
I shoot in such a simple way. It's like, I love shooting in the studio. I love shooting on location. So I've developed rules for myself when I'm shooting inside and rules for myself when I'm shooting on location. Let's go, Redman. Welcome New to member. the crew. Redman gets the smoke. Let's go, Redman. Appreciate you becoming a member, my guy. You get the smoke. I'm burning my goddamn place now. My signature style came from having to work quickly. Shooting editorial for the Globe and Mail, I had to work quickly. Shooting portraits um, of my friends before I started shooting with the Globe and Mail. When you're shooting your friends, your friends don't have patience. You have to work quickly. When it comes to how you shoot in the studio, I noticed quickly that many of the magazine covers had non-distracting backgrounds. So I developed a style of using non-distracting backgrounds in my photography. And over time, over time, I really developed a signature style. And, and that signature style, I think, still comes through today in my photographs. I make simple pictures that are well crafted. I'm very technically skilled when it comes to the light and my style comes through in my photographs because I don't deviate my style every time I shoot photos. My light, my exposure, my skin tone, how far I am from my subjects, how I shoot bands, how I shoot groups, how I shoot rappers, all of it kind of ends up feeling like when you look at it together, it feels like my work. So our style and developing a signature style is our voice with the camera. And you'll see an introspective type of a style when it comes to looking at my photographs. And your signature style comes when you shoot through the picture, when you shoot it out. Your style's not developing if you're not shooting every day. All it is, it's just developing slower. The more, if you are a newer photographer and you're not really sure what your niche is, I, I talk so much about specialization. If you're a newer photographer and you're not sure what your niche is, my suggestion, shoot a lot of things, but shoot categorizable things. Shoot cars, shoot portraits, shoot a wedding. If you got the skills and the confidence to shoot a wedding. Shoot some babies, shoot engagement portraits, shoot street style, shoot fashion, see what resonates with you. And once you have a couple of things that resonate with you, narrow down on them. Then as you got those three things going on, narrow down on one that you're best at. And that's how you find your niche. If you're working on styles that are, or if you're working on specialties that are categorizable, if you niche down that way, starting with shooting pretty much everything, you'll develop your signature style as well as finding your specialty at the same time. So let's talk a little bit about safe spaces. As a photographer, what we do, especially when we're shooting people, is we have to cultivate safe spaces. We have to make the this, this subject feel safe. We have to make them feel safe. So we have to cultivate safe spaces around us when we have our camera. We have to make people feel safe. And how we do that is by creating a comfortable environment. A comfortable environment, it's like a cocoon. It nurtures and protects. For both the photographer and the subject, a safe space can elevate the quality of the photo shoot, by the way. It's about harmony. It's about mutual respect. It's about shared comfort. I always remind my subjects that any photo shoot with me, even if it's a street portrait of someone I just met, it's gonna happen really quickly and it's gonna be amazing. And I also try to do it not in such a public area where there's people walking by and staring. I just try to make a comfortable environment for the subject I'm shooting. If I see them on a main street, I'll duck them into an alley and take a photo. I'll duck them like onto a side street and make a photo. 
it's important to create a safe space for anybody that is in front of your camera. And as shy people, we're used to needing that safe space because we're, we're used to creating that safe space because we also need that safe space for ourselves, us shy people. So we can create safe spaces whenever we have our cameras by um, constant reassurance and also being in a safe space. Don't be in a place where someone could grab your camera, be in a space. And it also helps if you go out with either another photographer or a friend, just someone to be there making sure that while you're shooting this portrait that nobody is uh, gonna come out and do anything crazy, especially if you live in a big city. So let's talk a little bit about networking. Networking is something that shy photographers have a hard time doing. I know that networking is not my strong suit, but networking is something that we all have to get good at. Networking. <sighs> Networking is often pictured as like a large noisy environment, but genuine connections can be forged in quiet corners. They can be forged online or in an intimate workshop. For a shy photographer, finding the right avenue for networking is crucial. It's quality over quantity. You don't have to be meeting 100 people. You just have to be meeting one, one at a time. That you connect with that maybe can help you get to the next level with your photography, or maybe it's a potential client that you can help their business get to the next level. So networking for introverts, <laughs> what do you do? Well, whenever you, if you're out in an event, whenever you see somebody make eye contact, that's the first time that the ice has been broken by a shy person, you made eye contact with someone, you nod, they nod, then the next natural thing is to go up to them and say, hey, I'm this thing and I do this thing. So I'm Cardi and I make photos, you know, what do you do? And then the, they'll be like, hey, I'm uh, Sarah and I'm an art director. So now, oh my God, it's an art director that you just connected eye to eye. She could be your next wife. You might not be great, doing that in person let's go steven c you might not be doing that in person you might not be great at doing that interaction in person you might be better at social you might be better leaving a comment on somebody's work that you like or you've done a search on instagram and found a bunch of art directors and you're sending little comments and following art directors and saying hey i really love your work i love the magazine you work for i'd love to show you some photographs you know so networking can happen anywhere. It can happen on LinkedIn, it can happen on social media. LinkedIn is social media. And it can also happen in person. You gotta get good at networking everywhere and be always ready with your short elevator pitch, which is telling people your name, that you're a photographer and the type of photography that you do. Oh my God, learning is a lifelong journey and I have to say, there's power in mentorship. The power in mentorship is incredible. I today, at my old age, still have mentors. The power of mentorship is amazing. You've heard me say before, I believe everybody has to have three things. Number one, a mentor. Somebody that they can look up to, someone that can guide them on their journey preferably somebody who's been on the journey the same as you're trying to be. Number two, you have to have a peer that is also trying to do the same thing that you're trying to do and they're at your level. So you have a little bit of friendly competition and you can share back and forth. Shared learning, like if you fail at something, you can talk about your failure with someone else and they can learn from your failure so they don't fail the same way you did. That kind of shared peer-to-peer -peer information is something that everybody has to have and the last thing is you have to mentor somebody if you're a photographer at any level guaranteed there's somebody who knows less about photography than you that you could talk to about photography it could be a kid it could be your son it could be your daughter everybody should have somebody 
that they're teaching. So you're paying free knowledge forward. So that's have a mentor, have a peer and be a mentor. That's something that every three, everything that we have to have those three things. So mentorships, learning is a lifelong thing. It never stops. It doesn't stop just because school is over. Having somebody experience to guide you to provide feedback, feedback and share their wisdom is absolutely transformative. A mentor understands the challenges, the highs, the lows, and can help you with a bit of a roadmap to navigate them because they've done it before. I have a mentorship program on, you can learn about that on my website or in the show notes. It's important to pay it forward. Um, and I like giving one-on-one -on -one time to people beyond what I can do here on YouTube. The last one, the last one is the power of personal projects. Personal work is what makes the photography world go round. Personal projects. Your personal work is way more important than you think. And one of the fastest routes to people knowing your name as a photographer, a personal project, the photography that you do for yourself when money isn't a factor. If you could shoot anything, what would you shoot? That's your personal project. These projects stem from passion and a deep desire to express yourself. For a shy photographer, personal projects can be both an escape and a playground. They offer freedom, a space to experiment, and a space to be yourself. There's no limits when it comes to your personal projects. You can do anything that you want. I shoot so many different personal projects. I have portfolios of personal work and I also have bodies of work that started as personal work and ended up being my professional work. I'm going to show you just one, just one of those bodies of some of these are NSFW. So I will start zooming ahead, but multiplicity was personal work. This body of work started as personal work and quickly became professional work. We can really push incredibly far with personal work, but we have to do it. We have to shoot personal work in order to really expand our horizons. I've been shooting to a black background for since I was 19. So seeing the evolution of me shooting on black through fashion, editorial portraits, it started as personal work. I started shooting on black when I was in photography school. So the look and feel of our personal work really can go quite, quite, quite far. By the way, all of this work is on my website. You can easily, easily see it. I just want to show you how shooting to black actually crosses over into commercial work. And seeing how that black background works in print is kind of cool. Personal work can become professional work if you do it right. It really can. It can become professional work if you do it right. know that as a shy photographer every time that we shoot a photograph every time that we put something out there we're kind of releasing a little bit of our soul <laughs> if you're shy how you can make this whole process is a little bit easier is let go a little bit to those photographs don't have an emotional attachment to your photography it's your work yes it's an expression of you but that sensitivity 
makes us hold on. It makes us afraid to share. And the only way that we're going to get better with photography is by letting the world see it. Maybe submitting photos here, maybe becoming a member and submitting photos here. I could help you become a better photographer. You guys with me still? You with me? Still? Yeah? You too? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yes or yes. <sighs> Let's go, babies. I appreciate you guys. If you're watching live, I appreciate you. You know who you are. Thank you for watching and tuning in. If you're a shy photographer and you found this thumbnail and you're watching this after the fact, I have done another episode, which I'll link in the show notes about yes yes. advice for the shy photographer. This is part two. Make sure you watch the first episode where I talk specifically about things that you can do to help you battle your shyness. So as we get into halfway, I appreciate you. As we get into halfway through this episode, um, usually Thursdays I do something and that is review photography. So today I thought I'd review some photographs. Photo reviews are a great way to help you get to the next level with your photographs. It's a great way to get a professional's insight on your pictures. And if you're trying to be a pro, it's a great way to hear a professional's opinion on your photographs that you're trying to make money from. So let us look at what I like to call the photo submission folder. We like to call them real photo reviews. Let's get it on. So first photo set from our man named Puppet Master. Puppet Master says the first one is from a random man. The second one is Ben Meyer's gig. And the third person is a portrait of a friend. Let's look at some photographs from Puppet Master. Puppet's first photo. Great light here, Puppet. I really like the vibe. I want you to watch your, oops, I want you to watch your top and bottom here because our head angle, we got like about an inch up here and also very little down here to yes, cut yes. from if we were going to get into an eight by 10. As a cover, it's a really strong photo. Like it's super strong. The color balance because of this light that's coming in here off the chandeliers, it's a bit warm. Worm, it's a bit warm. There is something white right here that you can grab color balance off of. You can also grab color balance off here because this is likely gray. Um, so I would love you to recolor balance this. There's also white candles in here that are yellow. That's going to make his skin tone not so warm and possibly just give this a little bit more of a neutral feeling. As far as the photograph, the composition, the way that the foliage really gives us that beautiful archway, it's nice. Although it's lit from the top, his raccoon eyes are not too too bad i love the fact that he's holding a beer that's pretty hilarious and the kilt the sandals it's a dope shot it's a dope shot i think you gotta just give yourself a little bit more head and head and feet space for the 8x10 um and also when you go to the 8x10 you don't want to lose the archway you don't want to lose um like doing a hard crop right across here you're going to lose a lot of that arch. So my suggestion would be just backing up a little bit and showing a little bit more scale. Good shot, though. I like this a lot, Puppet. That's the first one from Puppet Master. By the way, you guys can have your photos reviewed as well. You just have to become a member. Number one here on YouTube by hitting the Join button and then join my Discord show notes show you how to do it and then of course you can attach your discord to my to your youtube and then of that's how you'll yes, see my yes. submission folders and you can get intensive photo reviews like this 
It's a little bit of on-camera flash here from Puppet Master. The light's great. The on-camera flash really gives us the sweat details, the black-on-black -black sweat details. And because he's playing guitar, it gives us... Um, it freezes the motion of his fingers moving and his hands moving. Gives us a little bit of accents on the sweat here and here. The thing that's good about this light here is that it's not giving us a bad shadow. So I'm kind of impressed with the way that you use this flash puppet. And also you've given me an offset, meaning you haven't set this guy dead center. The center of the frame is here. So essentially you've given me the double page spread. Like this is absolutely on the button. You should be thrilled with this puppet. This is absolutely smoke. Let's get it on. It's a good high energy shot from Puppet Master. Let's go. Great shot. Great shot. Let's look at another from Puppet. Great close up. Great close up. This one is different light. This looks like the lights from... Um, let's go, guys. This looks like light from not on camera flash, just based on the catch lights in his eyes here. It looks very much like we have light coming from this direction by the highlight here. Um, good detail, good exposure still on the shirt. This doesn't look like it's the same flash that we had in this picture based on the exposure on his skin. But this is a great shot, a great close up, and really, I think, a great magazine cover. Just a little high as far as how far up you're going here with the headspace. I would drop that headspace down to about here to give you room for the masthead, like right around here, because again, um, I think you want that eye line somewhere around a third. If you divide the picture into thirds, like there, I wouldn't mind seeing his eye line right there, which drops it down just about there. Still a strong photo from our man, Puppet Master. Let's get it on. That's second one from Puppet. Let's look at number three. This is another on-camera flash. You can definitely see the difference with the on-camera flash versus the other. Same thing comes into effect with how high the headspace is. Although the eye line might be dropping in at the right spot. Um, the crop on this picture is a little bit different. It looks like you've almost cropped this for me to the proper like 9 by 12 proportion. I don't hate this. This is good. This is a good vibe. This is a good vibe, Puppet. You should be really happy with this photo. Good energy. We really caught the focus here, but we missed the focus on the eyes and the nose and the mouth. And I think in this picture, the, um, the teeth the nose and the eyes here are are just a little bit soft. I would love to New see member. the focus right there. Let's go, Justin. Justin with the new membership. My guy, Justin, you get the smoke. Welcome to the goddamn Cardi Crew, Justin. Let's go, my guy. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad you're here. Burning the goddamn house down for you, Justin. Welcome to the Cardi Crew. Glad you're here. Glad you're a part of this amazing community. All right, let's get into another from Puppet Master. That is three from Puppet. We've seen one, two, three, four. Actually, that's four from Puppet. And the last one is a friend. It's a portrait on the street. Look at this. This is good light. I mean, it looks like existing light but and it also looks like multiple sources you can tell from the double shadows here but i don't mind the light that's happening on his face the, the focus is really good there's no real hot spots him holding his head i'm thinking that's because he's leaning on something i think i wouldn't mind seeing his body a little bit more leaned because the hand on the head is kind of a feminine pose like just in general the like do you know what I mean? So I would have had him maybe touching his beard or doing like a little a little twisty or something like that if you wanted to have him doing something with his hands. There's definitely a vibe here. You've given me the right headspace. You can see here for the magazine cover. It's giving me good headspace here. 
This is strong. This is strong, Puppet. I like this a lot. I'm going to have a look here and say what is my favorite from the photos that you submitted. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to call this one my favorite photo right here. This is, for me, your best photo from the set. I'm giving you the smoke. I'm giving you the applause. Let's get it on. This is your best photo from this set. I like this a lot. Great job, Peppet. Those are some photographs from the one they call Puppet Master. He submitted five. We like to keep our submissions under five photos. Just makes it so we can look at some more people. Mr. J. Preston has got three photos for me to look at. This is a beautiful photo of this child. Great shot, great shot, great shot. I need it to be a little bigger so I can zoom in just a little bit um, more. We're gonna go 4,000 pixels um, between here and here and then times whatever it is long by 100 DPI. That's gonna give us nice big photos that I can zoom in on. I really would love to see more of, oops, I'd love to see more of this focus. Right now, I can't see the file big enough, so I can't tell if this photo's out of focus or not. Right now, it feels like it's a little bit soft. Your depth of field, um, DOP, meaning this eye in focus and this eye out of focus, meaning this eye in focus and his ear out of focus, um, his arm. I mean, that's okay, because I know you're looking for that shallow look, but you can't shoot wide open. You can't shoot wide open because the narrow, the narrow slit of focus is so shallow that the child moves, like you lock the focus, the child moves a bit and it's out of focus. So... You got to really make sure that you're focusing when you are doing these type of people photos that you are aiming between the white and the color of the eye. That is the spot that we are looking for. Right here is where we focus. That gets this eye tack sharp, gets our lashes sharp, and then depending on your f-stop, if it's 1.2, or 1.4 or 1.8, you're not going to get this eye in focus. You're not going to get the nose in focus because um, these two eyes aren't on the same plane. So I want you to be watching when you are shooting these pictures that you're looking at the back of your camera and you're zooming in to 1600% and you're making sure that that eye is absolutely tack sharp, Mr. It's a great composition. There's a great shot there. I think that it would be even, even, even stronger if um, the focus was nailed. Also, one other thing is the headspace. You're a little tight in the headspace. So, and also if this becomes an eight by 10, you're gonna lose here. That's one inch and you're gonna lose here that's another inch or you're going to lose two inches off the bottom because you don't want to cut the child's head so that means you're cutting a lot of the pumpkin so that means you're just a little bit too close and my suggestion is you got to just move back just a little bit just to give a little bit more um just a little bit more head space just back up just a bit all right jay preston all right, Jay Preston, let's see what else you got, my guy, for me. Definitely see what you're doing here. This is a little bit more long and narrow. This has a feeling of like an iPhone photo to me, just because of the proportion. Um, this long, narrow feels like a samsung iphone he's not very centered you can see the distance here versus here and then also how his arm is cut off and his knee here and this boot i feel like this whole thing you got to back up and include 
more of his body and a little bit more of the scene and then just square him up. But again, I think this is a iPhone photo. Um, let's keep the submission shot with your pro camera. And a picture of Jay Preston. I do believe this is a self-portrait that um, I looked at the other day that you submitted to the self-portrait folder. Great light, it's very inspired. It's a little small, um, 4,000 pixels wide. Um, but yes, it's a great shot. Um, the kid shot, I think is the best. I think that's the one that shot with the pro camera. So I'm gonna rank this one out of the three, Jay Preston, as your best photo. Watch the headspace, watch the headspace, and watch your eight by 10 crop. But I'm gonna call this your, ooh, your best photo. Good shot, let's go. Hit the wrong button there, mister. All right, let's see who else has got some photos for me to look at. By the way, if you're having a good time watching this stream and if you're learning something, please hit the like button. I'd appreciate that. Maybe leave a comment. Comments help me more than you know. And I hate, have, I hate having to keep asking. And all that stuff that you hear, that is my chat controlling my stream. If you watch live, you can control my stream as well. So... Sebastian K said, last Sunday I had the amazing opportunity to take some nice shots of a friend of mine. His name is Erek. Pictures taken with my Sigma 35. Long story short, I asked him if he'd like to pose. It was a new experience for him. And for me, it was the second time. I learned a lot. Most valuable lesson is to understand what I don't know and what will be helpful in the future with, the type, with this type of photography session. Fortunately, I didn't take my modifier for the light. That's why shadows are so sharp. I'm not sure if I'll be able to watch live. I love you all. Thank you and happy shooting. This is some photography from Sebastian K. Say hi if you're in chat, Sebastian. Sebastian's first shot. Great job. Great job. I got nothing but smoke for this picture, Sebastian. Let's go. It's a great shot. It's a great shot. High energy. High energy. Let's look at it as a cover. Um, it's a little top heavy as far as um, where the head is versus thinking about it as a cover. Again, you got to give the top of the magazine a little bit of headspace. As far as the leading line, my guy, the leading line here is amazing how you have him framed how his legs are moving the orange and the orange how the green kicks off the orange his pose everything is right on the button exposure on his face i would say is just a touch dark um i would say the exposure on his face is a touch dark i wouldn't mind seeing this um like probably plus a third on the face, maybe a half here on the skin tone. As we can see, this is a white shirt and we're also aiming into shade. So because we're aiming into shade and the exposure is coming from this way, you can see the highlight and the shade are good. We got detail, but this white shirt is reading a bit gray and it's also reading a bit blue because of the shade. So number one, make it a bit warmer. Number two, increase the exposure to about plus a half. It's gonna make the shirt snap a little bit more. It'll still hold the integrity of the sky. And I think you will see that this will snap into what I like to call a absolutely perfect picture by Guy. This is really, really great. Should be thrilled. This is sick. First shot from Sebastian today. All right. Let's see what else Sebastian has got for us. Shot number two. We're going to go clockwise. Yeah, this is a swaggy shoot, man. You got some vibes here. Shot number two. Great energy. Let's look at it as a cover. Great energy, man. Great energy. There's an issue with exposure. Um, again, um, it feels a little low in exposure if you look here um the exposure there is low 
here, I would say that's like under by like a half. Again, that white shirt, I want it to pop just a little bit more. I also see that you're using some sort of external light, but it looks like you have no light meter. <laughs> and when you have no light meter, it gets it really hard to get perfect exposure um, when you're winging it. So I think that's why if you look on stream, you'll see that this overall scene, it's an amazing shot but it's dark. It's dark by about half a stop. So I would like to see it lightened. But other than that, mister, which you can do in, in post, this is an absolute banger. The energy is really great. Small details, but I have visual OCD. You should too. You should be seeing all the kind of stuff that I see. You see how this circle here doesn't complete didn't cut the circle off on this side, but you did cut the circle off on that side, which means back up and make sure that the detail here is the same as the detail on this side. I know that you've centered the circle, but you centered the circle by cutting one side off. So small, small things. I love the headspace. You've given it lots of headspace and showed scale. I love the fact that he's on his toes and the vibe. You worrying about this sharp shadow is the least of my worries. It's not even noticeable. I am, however, noticing the exposure, which the exposure is way more important. And that's something that you're going to nail when you get a light meter, especially if you're mixing daylight with flash. If you're mixing daylight with flash, TTL through the lens metering will not nail it. It just won't. And also one flash is at 100%, next flash is at 20. If you're using AA batteries in your flash, it's why yesterday or the last episode, I recommend an outdoor studio strobe that has like a battery that gives you 100 flashes, like, I mean, a thousand flashes at like 100% power. It's going to give you F8, 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 like the whole time, not like the way that speed lights kind of ramp up and down. So if you're trying to do outdoor flash, um, get the right equipment and guaranteed the speed light that I or the um, outdoor strobe that I showed costs less than a speed light and guaranteed a thousand bucks better, a thousand times better. All right, let's look at another photo from our man, Sebastian K. Again, your ideas are really strong. I see what you're saying here about the hard shadow. It doesn't bother me. I like the idea. Um, exposure here is about minus a third. So exposure is closer, closer. It's still just a touch dark. Um, also, the placement of the flash. We're trying to get this no shadow. I'll just enlarge this a bit. We're trying to get this no shadow here to join this cheek shadow, which is Rembrandt lighting, which means you need to just move your light around this way a little bit more. So it's coming from the side a little bit more aggressively until this shadow joins this shadow and it'll leave just a pocket of light here. Also the height of your light, it doesn't look very high based on the angle of the shadow light travels in straight lines so i can say based on where the top of his hat is here and the top of his hat is here your light is exactly on that angle and my suggestion would be to bring your light higher so your light is coming on a bit more of a radical angle which is then gonna push your nose shadow um lower going to push this lower now which is going to look a lot cleaner it's going to push the nose shadow lower right now based on his head angle um it's going too straight that way um yeah we should be able to break down any light that anybody is doing always based on light travels in straight lines i i can see exactly where he paced, placed the light based on where the shadows are so I can tell him exactly what he would do to fix the light based on the, where the shadows are. So um, the diffusion doesn't bother me at all. The hard light, in fact, looks like it could be a lamp post, you know, that's kicking that light there. 
So I don't mind this hard shadow. I just want you to nail the exposure and nail the placement. All right, let's look at another one. So that is one, two, three, four. Four. Um, it's a good idea, again, as a cover. Great idea, it's a great composition. Exposure, again. Um, exposure. This one is about, um, you can tell by how much detail that we're losing back here. Um, this exposure needs to be plus, I would say a half. It's about a half under. Um, I'd like to see that white t-shirt pop just a little bit more. The shoes pop just a little bit more and bring up just a little bit more detail in the shadows. I can see exactly where you're placing the light. You can see it's coming up from here. You can see where the no shadow is as well. Because the no shadow is pushing off to the side, my suggestion with this one is light from the front so the no shadow comes down here a little bit more straight because it's pushing off to the side and it's so long, it's a little bit radical. Um, the nose is where you're looking on every face to see if your light's right. The distance between the nose and how far that no shadow's traveling along the face. Secret time. All right. And your last photo, Sebastian K. This last photo, to me a little simple with the posing, based on all the shots that you're shooting, I see that you're trying to make this part of the photo that is this. Um, move him over, put him more in front of this because of the composition, green here and that. You could actually put him within that eye like you did over here with um, this photograph here. Put him in the eye, I would say the same way. Skimming it this way, I think this part of the wall becomes distracting. Welcome, calligraphy. Welcome, welcome. Glad you're here. Thanks for subscribing. Um, the knee, I don't know. It, 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 to me, it's not the pose. It's not the pose at all. It's not the shot. I mean, if you're looking at this shot and you're looking at this shot, like what shot goes in your portfolio? You know what I mean? To me, this isn't, this isn't even a consideration. It's this picture. It's this picture um, and probably this picture. But again, exposure fixed on all of them. And if I had to pick one as your best photo from this entire set. Hmm, your best photo from the entire set. I'm gonna go on difficulty. I'm gonna say this right here is your best photo. It gets the smoke. It gets the applause. Good job, Sebastian. Great shot. You guys agree? Do you agree? Do you agree with me? As far as best photos? All right. Let's see how many more we got. Oh my goodness. We're going to have to fly through these a little faster. Let's see. Today at 5.58, yes yes. Efren slipped in all right so let's see from our man mike so mike says let's try this out these are a small part series from a trip to patagonia uh fuji gfx um 40 to 100 f4 um good job let's see what you got here with this gfx it's a great shot great shot Exposure's a little low, as you can see, just looking at it on screen. Um, you can see this exposure's just a touch low, but I like the idea and I like the I like the mood in this photograph. He's a little offset. I see what you're doing. You're really trying to reveal what's happening here. Therefore, you pushed him that way in the frame. But the way that it's clipping his shoulder, the way that it's clipping this windshield on the boat makes it feel claustrophobic. I know you can't really back up that much, but you can square him up and like give us a little bit more information, give us a little bit more of his shoulder. I think that that would be a little bit helpful. Like just this claustrophobic edge, it just makes it, 
it makes the viewer feel anxious like you're you're too tight um and we know that this is water this way we can see it if you give it to us to hear we can see it if you give it to us to hear i see that you're trying to include this hill but you've already cropped off the hill because the hill ends way over here you've already cropped it off anyways so you might as well push it in a little tighter and um center up the shot it's a good cover though let's look at it as a cover 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 yeah it's got good headspace i like how you have the eyes along the thirds i like how you have the eyes along the third it's good it's good composition i just think that you could push it over just a wee bit first 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 photo from mike let's go second photo from mike Yeah, this has a vibe. This looks like you've pre-cropped this for me. I just want you to watch your edges. I want you to watch, like I, I know you're looking here and seeing this composition. And yes, I know that like this hand, the head's not as important as this. The flies are the most important thing in this photo. So there has to be a way for you to crop so it's not taking away so much information from him. Um, I do like seeing this, but this then, I know you're kind of tucking back behind and it's out of focus, but it is distracting. I feel like there's lots of elements in this photograph that are making me like fight between like looking at him, looking at his phone, looking at the man with the hat and looking at what he's doing and then looking at the, fly sh the fishing rod behind um, and looking at this part of the boat here. I find it, it's just a little distracting. And because his headspace is so high up in the frame, you can see if we go to a cover, um, if we go to a cover, it's like we're losing a lot of information because you've put it in the top quarter of your photograph. I think we kind of, if you're trying to have us look at him and the phone, it can't be, it can't be so high up. I think that that's got to drop way down. Two cents in a bag of chips for you, Mikey. Let's see another one, my guy. Let's see another one from Mikey. I like this it has horizontal. I like this as a horizontal. The thing that works for me is the double page spread. As you can see, as a spread, it it's oops, that's not the right tool try that again um as a double page spread that's the gutter right there so the gutter here and you having him on that side of the frame you can see it's almost like you've pushed him too far this way still and the the edge cut of that jacket it just feels a little claustrophobic. We could have brought him over to about here um, and not change the photo at all. I want you to also watch your horizon line. Um, this is something that's difficult to straighten after the fact, but you see the horizon line is quite crooked. So our mind, yes, is leaning this way with him, but that also would have helped. Um, it would have been the same if it was straight. Um, so again, watch your horizon line. Let's look at our next photo from Mike. Let's look at Mike's next photo. All right. All right, Mikey. Yeah. Another double page. Um, I like it. I like the fact that it's shot as a double page. Um, I want you to... Look at the horizon again. So that now is becoming a bit of an ism. It's something that I want you to be watching. I want you to look how you're clipping the hat, which again is it's the smallest thing. You just back up just a bit so you're not clipping the top of his hat and just give him a little bit of space. This is another one where you're showing him 
and you're trying to show out here um which means like yes this is out of focus but for me what he's doing down here is really important but i we can't see it his eyes are looking down here but i don't get that enough and it's so close to the bottom of the frame that we're not hitting it this leading line of the fishing rod unfortunately doesn't pay off because it doesn't give me a hook it doesn't give me a fish it doesn't give me the end of the fishing line it just cuts off so for me i would prefer to see this shot a little bit more punched in I'd prefer to see this possibly as a vertical and have him moved over a little bit more in the frame. Let's look and see if there is one more from our man, Mike. Yes, there is a last photo. This is a nice detail shot. Punching in on the hands. We missed the focus just a bit. You can see the focus is here on his hand and we need the focus to be up here on the fly. Um, make sure that you shoot frames and then check the focus. Also the focus here on her finger. It's because your depth of field and because your aperture is so wide. Everybody loves shooting wide. Everyone like buys a 1.2 and shoots at 1.2, but there's problem shooting when you shoot so wide open. It's like these two fingers are so close together, but one's in focus and one isn't. One that like the thumbs in focus, but what he's holding onto isn't. And it's because it's such a shallow depth of field. <coughs> if you shot at F 2.8 instead of 1.8, you would have been able to get this this and this all tack sharp so it's just something that i want you guys to be watching just because your lenses go so wide open especially if you're shooting with a 50 or an 85 or anything above 50 the depth of field just drops off a cliff you have no depth of field on telephoto lenses all right, let's look at my favorite photo from our man, Mike. My favorite photo from Mike. Let's just delete some of those. My favorite photo from Mike unequivocally is this one, Mike. This is your best photo. Good job, buddy. Thank you so much for submitting. Again, I want you to watch your exposure. Watch your exposure so this stuff doesn't go too far. And I noticed you only gave me one color picture. I would have liked to have seen some of these other ones in color. All right. So, John Wallace, first time uploader. Let's see what John Wallace has to say. First photo from John Wallace. John, this is nice. It's a little it's a little noisy meaning your iso your iso is high um you can see the noise it definitely has like a film kind of a look kind of looks like film but we have to nail the focus the eyelashes the eye is where our focus has to be but i also know that you have a baby here and the baby is the focus but in this case here your baby the eyes aren't in focus either so it's tricky once the once the iso goes way high the noise starts to go way high the highlights start to really burn out you see the noise that we have happening in here so again my suggestion don't go so high with the iso because you're gonna you're going to lose a lot of that fine detail that you want. And I know you're in an environment, you're shooting a baby, you're not wanting to use strobe or flash, which is completely understandable. I see that you do have light happening over here. What I want you to do is you're shooting hopefully with a 50 millimeter, which is going to give you a good 1.2, 1.4, 2, 2.8 
and then I would zoom in and shoot around 2.8 and then see where you can go with ISO getting 2.8. You can handhold this at like a 50th of a second at 2.8 at probably ISO 800 would be my imagining. So um, you don't need to go far, so far. I would also check your shutter speed and see if you shot at like a 4,000 shutter speed here. Wide open, check. Um, let's see, actually, you might have kept your IXF. E no, there's no there's no EXF data here. Um, first effort from John Wallace. Let's look at photo number two. It's a bit tricky, John, to see what this, this is um, because of the noise and again, because of the high ISO. Make sure you don't have your camera set for auto ISO because your camera will actually go crazy. Don't let your camera just pick the ISO. At this size, it's very beautiful. And yes, the grain has a pretty quality and such, yes. But again, shoot at the lowest ISO you're, like the scene will allow. Um, shoot at the lowest ISO the scene will allow. You don't want your photos to fall apart once someone zooms in like this. Um, we have cameras that go to like 100 megapixels. Um, yeah, just a little bit more light. A little bit more light is going to make this feel a lot nicer. So a little bit more light. Let's look at another photo from John Wallace. John, I just think that there's like an ISO thing with you. And again, I'm not sure if this is shot with your pro camera um, or shot with a phone, but there's definitely like some digital noise that I see happening in your files. And again, I'm just wondering where the noise is coming from. Um, when you're not using light, you compensate with ISO, but it gets to a point where this, it's, the ISO can't be that high because the files just end up being a bit of a mess. Um, I'm just, uh, you shot this with a Canon D3? Thanks, John. So if you shot it with a Canon, the reason that it's looking like this is because of the lack of light. You can shoot with the best camera in the world. But if you don't have light, if you're not putting light in on the scene, the best camera in the world can't do much. You could also be shooting with the worst camera in the world, but if you light the scene, it's gonna look amazing. So it's all light. I think that you're doing this with existing light, with window light, with room light. And I think that that's, um, you turned black and white and added grain, said John Wallace. John Wallace, don't add grain. Don't add grain. Um, adding grain is not helping. It's a trick. I want to see um, your photos without grain added. And this shot needs to be done with a softbox. If you look at like... And again, if you want to be commanding like high top dollar for your photography, you got to look at Scott Cicino. You got to look at Behance. And and like open any Behance profile and look at what the detail looks like on any image. Images look like this. This is what current contemporary photography looks like there is no grain it's because they're using light so when you're trying to like light is the thing that makes photography sing if you don't understand light you have to start practicing with light or shooting outside in natural light do these still lifes outside do them in the backyard in open shade do them in the backyard in direct sun and see what light looks like see how hard it is to shoot still lifes in direct sun 
um, but doing them inside just under whatever um, diffused light is not giving us enough exposure. I want your shots to look like you cannot see the grain. You can't see the noise. This is how our files have to look. All right, let's look at another shot from John, yeah? I think John's got one more. Oh, he's got two more. Yeah, and I know that, like, when you don't add grain, we have, like, the exposure is almost perfect here. The shot is great. I think it's a little too high in the headspace, as you can see what it looks like when we drop the masthead in just a little high in the headspace but it's a strong picture i like his pose and i like his attitude and i like where you placed him for this me this is an 11 this is my favorite shot so far this is the right attitude and the sunglasses make make this photo it makes me very very afraid of this guy he looks like he's a uh, bill collector. <laughs> he looks like a repo man. I love it. All right, let's look next. And this drummer. This is great. This might be another shot that you're adding grain. Um, yeah, I, I see it. I just feel like, um, yeah, I don't think that it's needed. I think it takes a little bit away from the quality. Um, Let's look at where the gutter drops in this shot, John. The middle of this photo is right here. Again, tricky. It's tricky to not clip things off, but if you imagine this two pages in a magazine, we would lose his hand to the gutter. So it's tricky to get this like where his fingers aren't being clipped by the center of the frame. But again, just be conscious when you're shooting horizontal that you have to make sure that you don't put anything too important in the center of the frame. All right, let's look at John's photos and I'm going to pick my favorite shot from John. I am going to say unequivocally, this is your best photo, John, let's go. Good job. That's my favorite. I'd love to see some more work that you're submitting, some new work that you're submitting. And I'd also like to learn a little bit more about what it is that you want to shoot, what your niche is. Do you shoot people? Is this your wife and child? Is that why you included that photo? Um, the still lifes, where are they coming from? I'd like to know more questions. The still lifes, there's definitely a, a, a market for product photography, but you really have to invest. You really got to invest in lighting and really learning how to craft beautiful still lifes. You're on like this set idea with the eggs is a cool idea. I just want you to take light um, so much further than what you're doing. And also it's gonna, it's gonna help if you um, don't add grain. Like again, there's photographers like Corey, like Devon Shu that have like really have developed a style where adding grain works, but it's like you have to look at the whole body of work together, the style, what they're shooting, it all kind of works together. Um, when you're adding grain just to add grain, I don't think that it always works. Um, let's look, I hope that helped you, by the way, Mr. John Wallace. Let's look at some photos from Romeo. We have quite a few, we got like one, two, three, four, five photographers left here to look at. Romeo says some photographs from a street shoot I did in Asheville, North Carolina. Romeo, a little bit of street photography from Romeo. There's definitely a vibe here, Romeo, when you're shooting with a lens that um, like, because it doesn't have such a depth of field, like the first thing I see is this man is walking through this woman's head. Like because this guy here behind is walking through the photo, for me, then this becomes not a photo. This man walking here, the chairs here, 
the chair here, this drum here, it makes it distracting and it really takes us away from this face. And then the exposure on her is like, um, I'd say half a stop under. Um, it's a tricky thing when you're shooting straight on at this angle because there's so much distraction here. This is one of the cases where you drop down and aim up. So now in aiming up, you have the tree as the background. It cuts the building out of the way, cuts some of these people out of the way, and you're able to just isolate this woman. I think that um, street photography is hard, but this photo is is very distracting and because you're not shooting with a telephoto the people behind are very predominant and take your eye from going to her to him to him to him to that to that to the drums back here like it's taking you away from the main thing so work on removing distractions from your frames distractions take away distractions you're in a whole different ball game Second picture from that series. Um, again, definitely a vibe. She's making eye contact, which is stronger. The fact that she's looking at you. Um, losing her hand here is really tricky because again, you follow her hand and you want her hand to be in the photo the way that it is on this side, but we're losing it. Um, drum circle, lots of stuff happening behind that again is distracting you from her. Another scenario where I would say I would go low and aim up at her and use this tree canopy as the background to try to isolate her. Or I would shoot vertical, punch in, and try to get just her face up against these trees. Because that's the money, is just close up. Other than that, it ends up being just too busy a photograph, Romeo, for me. Um, let's look at another. Well, look at the difference here when you remove the distractions. When you remove the distractions from the background and you shift from that vibe of taking pictures, meaning, oh, I'm out, things are happening. I'm gonna just like taking pictures to making pictures, which I believe you did here. When you're crafting a photo, you're able to get something that's so much more detailed and compelling. Um, we missed the focus a little bit here. You can see on the eye, it's not quite sharp, but the depth of field, the focus, these dramatic lines happening behind him, the color tone, the light from the side, um, and just his sad eyes. And the hand out of focus with this lighter in the foreground really actually adds to this photo. Um, to me, this is so far your best photo. This is your first 11. This is, um, I'm saying, really, really good. We missed the focus just a little bit on the eye. And again, make sure you're aiming between the white and the color of the eye. That's where we're trying to focus. And after you shoot a frame, check. I'll say again, after you shoot a frame, check. Check to make sure that you nailed the focus. And if you didn't nail it, shoot another one right away the same photo if you're trying to imitate it like not checking means that you find out after after the moment is gone after you can't recreate it that's when you find out that the shot's out of focus so check your frames every new idea you got to check your frames it's another shot here from romeo yeah, this picture, um, again, we're missing the focus. You can see in here on his eyes, once we really start zooming in here, that it's a little bit of a mess in the focus there. I'm not sure, like it looks like the focus is on his shirt here and not um, on his eyeball here. Again, it's make sure that you're not using all focus points when you're shooting. Make sure that you choose one focus point our camera lets you choose all of them but you should only choose one because the camera is just going to focus on the thing that's the closest and in this case the thing that was the closest was his shirt that the camera could grab onto so the camera grabbed here but we're trying to focus here i guarantee that this is a scenario where 
when you're looking through your camera um, and you have um, focus point in the center, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. If they're all selected, the camera is just going to grab wherever it grabs or it's going to grab back here. So the camera doesn't know where you want to focus unless you have eye tracking. Um, the camera doesn't know where you want it to focus. So you have to tell it, turn off all the focusing points, leave on one focusing point and choose the one that's closest to the eye, lock the focus, recompose and shoot. And that's going to give you the type of tight focus that you need in these photographs. Like right now we're missing the focus by quite a bit on a couple of your shots and because it's repeating and happening more than once to me it tells me that it means that you're you're set on multiple focus points i think for sure that's what you're doing all right let's look at another one from our man romeo romeo's last photo a little bit of mixed light where we have sun up here and um shade down here and you can see it's exposed for the shade but it's feeling a little flat in contrast meaning it's being it's feeling a bit gray um over here the exposure is hot so you have to use highlights and an in lightroom and pull down the highlights into a negative direction uh, in order to recover some of this. And then here, you got to improve contrast. The contrast needs to improve here because I know this is red, but it looks very gray and it matches the tone of her pants. It matches the tone of that too much. So I think it would serve to add a little bit of contrast there and do a little bit of shadow highlights over there. I hope that helps you, my man, Romeo. If I had to pick a favorite shot for me unequivocally, unequivocally, without question, I know what shot it is. Unequivocally, without question, this is your best photo. Your best photo, it gets the smoke, and I want you to be thinking about how you can be imitating this type of photography. This is the angle that you're going, that you should be going for. It shouldn't be this. It shouldn't be this, where there's so much stuff happening in the background that your, your eye is being pulled all over the frame. It should be deliberate, single thing in the frame. That's when you actually see the person that you're photographing because their eyes aren't fighting. Um, you can see the difference between this photograph and this photograph. Like they're uncomparable. But they both came out of you. So you have to know when you've just taken a snapshot for a snapshot and you just made a photograph that's portfolio level. They're both not worth showing. One of them is worth showing. One of them is worth never showing. So that's how photographers get great as they learn how to edit. Yes, I shoot tons of stuff, but not everything sees the light of day. And by the way, nobody misses it if you don't show it to them. Nobody misses it. If it's if it's photography that's less than your best best in showing it to them, you're just lowering confidence. All right, let's get to Matthew Sargent with um, some new photos. So um, my wife, this is Matthew Sargent says, my wife brought a new life into the world on 1006, took two weeks off work, and I've just been at home cleaning, relaxing, and making more memories with my children and family. Here's some pictures of my permanent pr practice portrait people. <laughs> and to finish it, a landscape shot that was taken the same day as that last landscape shot I posted last week. Let's look at some shots of Matthew Sargent's kids. Matthew, this is a beautiful moment. I really like this. This is inspired light. Inspired light. A great moment 
like the focus the cover like this is like on a different type of a level this is really really special you're getting the smoke for this matthew this is absolutely spectacular absolutely spectacular this is i don't know if i've used the word spectacular for your photographs before but this is magic like distance between the toes and the edge of the frame this thing to catch your eye this like like suitcase on the couch little hint of light up here but if the picture ended right here it would be completely equally as strong as strong so that top part of the picture if you go to an 8x10 we take this all out but still it doesn't take away anything from the photograph the light and the way she's directly lit but right behind her is shade 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 but then here is light super subtle shadows the toys that she's playing with and her focus outwards not looking at the camera at all just makes this such a magic photo this is magic absolutely magic matthew you should be freaking thrilled thrilled i'm gonna give you uh applause great shot matthew matthew's second shot it's the boy the boy with the eyes and the dirty face look at this great focus here matthew i love again the like looking away from camera the light is inspired good exposure here although you know you could go like maybe half a stop up in order to bring the skin tone up again but it doesn't bother me because it is like very much the same sensibility as the first one it's a little close here as far as this distant it's not it's not horrifying um but i wouldn't mind backed up a little bit mouth open looking forward it's great shot matthew again is it as strong as this one jesus is it as strong as this one i i don't know if you're going to be able to beat that photo because it's so strong but it's a close it's a close second so far great job second shot from matthew Sargent. great job all right let's look at we're gonna look at all the kid shots first and then we're gonna come back and look at the landscape let's go two bananas on a piano two bananas on a banana um great i kind of like the fact that this kid is out of focus behind the, we got a little bit of top light it's tricky you got pot light she's got a little bit of raccoon eyes but this is the main character this is a little dark um i would um you know bring this up like two-thirds of a stop try to hold back highlights here so we don't lose her um yes we cut his hood a little bit that doesn't bother me too much the fact that his hands are on the piano is cute his hands is where the focus point is and the piano is where the focus point is but we also got to watch his focus not not losing his focus it's a great idea it's a good 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 attempt it's a great memory for sure for sure um i don't know if it's going to beat your first photo first photo this is a strong one though this is really strong new addition to the family great moment the cover of today's parent magazine great moment great moment this would be really strong in black and white really deep focus like if you look at this focus matthew like this is insane focus but also because you're shooting at such a shallow depth of field we have this in focus and mom's hand out of focus this in focus and mom's finger out of focus because you're shooting so wide open um i know you needed to for the light but um again you could have stopped down like a stop and just shot at a bit of a slower shutter speed but again very very magic magic moment and a landscape to throw into the mix i like this 
I like this. It's got a good feeling. This makes me feel good. Okay, Matthew, you're making it really tricky. You're making it really tricky if I have to pick a best photo now. You're making it tricky. Um, whew. You're making it tricky. Um, your best photo, unequivocally, this is your best photo. Your best photo. Amazing. Just absolutely amazing. Amazing. Yes or yes. I love it. Matthew, that's your best photo. Yeah? You agree? You two agree? You guys still with me? You still with me? Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you all right let's see who we have left matthew good job anna banana thank you again for last week's review this time i'm submitting some photos from my trip to europe yes, this sir, summer yes. this is travel street photos done with my kit lens 24 to 120 f4 anna with the street photography anna this is inspired this is really beautiful your exposure is getting better. You're not going too hot. Good whites here. Good detail in the highlights. I really love the depth to this photo. We have what's happening between these two. Um, also, yes, we could have pushed them like just a little bit over because I don't think this and this and this is as important. So for me, I would have ended this photo um, I would have ended this photo right there and pushed them, just pushed them over. And then he's not right in the gutter because right now he's right dead in the center of the photo. So it makes it hard to put this in a magazine. So again, if we cut this here, then it just moves them over, you know? Unfortunately, with this particular crop, you'd have to do this then in order to put them in the right spot. And I would really not want to cut their feet. Again, it's a great photo. I really like the light. I really like the multi-dimensional. You have these two interacting. You have them interacting. You have them interacting. This guy back here. This guy back here. You know? And then the restaurant. This and the balconies. I think that you could have just pushed them over. This is a strong photo though. Strong photo. Let's look at another one from Anna. We're going to go anti-clockwise this time. Another photo from Anna. This is pretty, really pretty. Let's have a look at the center of this photo. Drops right about here. That's the center of the frame. There's a vertical here as well. I feel like um, this is a great moment and I really like the the way he's looking that way. It's strong. Good focus. Dirty nails. I like it. Mosaic. Yeah, this is a strong photo. I like it. For me, I would have taken him and put started the photo right here. I would have started it right there and then made it so it ended with the beginning of the black. That would have pushed him that way and taken him off the gutter just a little bit and also given more detail that way meaning more mosaic and more textured wall. It's a great shot though, Anna. Let's look at another from Anna Banana. We're going anti-clockwise, I said, right? More street photography from Anna. Your exposure is great. The focus is great. These three ladies three generations it looks like really great very busy photo but compositionally sound we could even tuck the gutter um in here between these two pages 
This is a strong photo. This would also work well in black and white. I like this a lot. I like this a lot, Anna. This is a good one. Very good one. All right. Um, I've got two more from Anna. This is a funny moment. It's a funny moment. Expensive bike. Um, no bike clothes. Her looking at her phone. It's a little center focused again for me, Anna. When we look at um, this as a double page spread. We see the gutter goes right here. Is there a way to drop the gutter here between the bike and him? To me, that's where like you watch the center of the frame so you can drop the gutter between them and them. And you put these two on one page and you put the bike on the other page. Or you put, the, I mean, they're not sitting far enough apart to put the gutter in between them, but I would definitely drop the center of the photo there in this case. It's a very interesting photo. You have great layering. I love the layering of the composition that's happening in here. This depth of field, this man up here, this trees up here. Like it's a great shot in this hard line of focus through the center of the photo. I just would love to see um, just watch the center of your horizontal frame so you're not dropping stuff right in the center. All right, let's have another look at... This is the last photo from Anna. This is a cute moment. Very, very, very fashiony moment. Very fashiony moment. This man here looking at them. Um, this guy here. For me, this is one of those shots where again they're dead center in the frame i would push them that way and get rid of this guy meaning i would end the picture here and then extend what i see in that direction and then drop the gutter somewhere in here or you shoot this vertical and this becomes the photo here. Just them. It's a very, very like great movement. They're all, and there's a third person behind here cause I can see feet, but I can't see that third person. So maybe you're moving around that way um, to try to see that third person or you're moving that way to try to tuck that third person in here. It's tricky because you're just grabbing shots and not asking them. So I know it's tricky when you're doing street photography. Um, I'm going to look through and tell you what I think is my favorite from Anna's photographs. Who my favorite from Anna's photographs. Let me look at them small. Yeah, I think it's this one, Anna. This to me, oh, I closed it. This one to me, I think is my favorite for sure. This one is my favorite. I'm gonna call this your best photo, Anna. You get the smoke. That is my favorite photo. Great, and again, it's it's really tricky. It was really tricky to choose. It was definitely between that one and um, this one. I just think that the one that I chose is just a little bit more difficult to achieve. Great, great job. Great job, Anna. All right, guys, I hope you're enjoying this photo review. We have two more photographers to look at. One of them is my actual brother. You'll see he looks just like me. He looks just like me. This is Leslie Cardi. Let's go, Brother Les. This is a great self-portrait cover shot. Great self-portrait cover shot. Super strong. I like the crop. Let's fix it and make it a, let's make you a cover star. Yeah, this, I like the angle of your head here, Les. 
I actually like the angle of your head a lot. Um, just making it so your eyes aren't straight just works. Yeah, it's dope. Dope. Super simple. I think this one was taken with a phone. Or was this taken with the Canon? Very interesting question I have for the brother. Let's look at his photos of these sunflowers. This is clean. This is clean. Oh my god, this bee flying in here, Les. It would be sick to catch that, like, with a little bit of a faster shutter speed to be able to, like, catch this guy in, like, a little bit more flight. I also got to give you this 70 to 200 that I have here that I don't use. We really nailed the focus here on the inside of this flower. It's strong. Super strong. The exposure is a little bright here, bro. I would drop this down um, by like half a stop. I think this is just too light, just a touch. Just too light, just a little bit light. If you drop the exposure, if you drop the exposure down um, uh, a third, maybe a half, you'll find that all of this is gonna snap up back here is going to snap up and your color saturation is going to really pop. Great shot from Breda Les. Let's look at another. And this one, he got the B landed. Great. And also the offset. So the composition here, bro, this is winning. This is great. Winning. This is your best photo. I'll say right now out of the set. Great shot. Double page spread. Great, Les. This is great. Um, exposure. Just drop it just a touch. Probably a third of a stop, but this is great. Really strong. <coughs> strong, strong, strong. Last photographer. Oh, by the way, I got I mean, I already said that's your best photo. I don't need to say that again. But our last photograph of the day, photographer of the day, his name is Steven. Not Steven C, but Steven Chong Lee. This is the one we call E-Friend. E-Friend is a fashion and portrait photographer. This is beautiful. Beautiful. Really strong, E-Friend. I like this a lot. I like this a lot. This is really great. Really great mood. Great movement. I like the pose. The headspace. Let's look at the headspace here. Efren, this is just strong, bro. You shoot really well and you have such a fashion sensibility. You're already shooting for agencies. Like, you're doing it. Look at the focus. Really strong focus, good retouching. It's good, it's good. I want you to try bumping the exposure up just a touch, maybe a third like maybe 10%, 10%, just to make this feel not muddy, you know, make the white shirt feel not muddy. Just the slightest, slightest, just humor me. Give this like 10 to 30% in exposure until we start to lose highlights here. Bust it up just a touch, just a touch. Um, love it though, really strong frog. That's E-Friend, Stephen Chong Li. Wow, let's go. This is dirty, erty. This is nuts, man. Look at the light. Yo, you shoot in the studio so well. This is such a beautiful, such like such a beautiful sensibility, Stephen. Like, <laughs> Stephen Chong Lee. Yo, I told you, he is not to be messed around with. This guy is a real photographer. Shoots proper, beautiful. Love the sensibility. Love the legs crossed over. The little detail with her feet. The hands. The fact that the sleeves are pushed up. The oversize. The fashion is on point. This is so, so, 
so strong. So strong. Like, wow. I hope you guys are feeling that. This is photography from Stephen Chong Lin. Very strong fashion photographer. He's been watching me for a couple of years. Steven, this is strong too, man. This is really great. I think we're, I think it's just a little top heavy with the headspace. Um, I would love just a little bit more room. It's a little claustrophobic this way. Again, I, I'm I know this is pre cropped, but the pants are an item that we can sell. So I would love like meaning when this is in a magazine, the pants are something that we can sell. I would love you to back up on this like just a touch so it's not so tight a little bit less of a cut on her elbow show me a little bit more of the pants um love the head angle love the pose love the open mouth um and the exposure is spot on spot on like this is proper and again, this is when you shoot in the studio with a light meter. This is what it looks like. So, Steven Cheong Lin. All right, that's number two for him. Let's see what your third photograph looks like. Great idea. Strong, great idea. Pre-crop to eight by 10. How's the focus on this, Steven? Am I wrong? Are we losing a little bit in here? Just a touchy touch soft. I mean, it's definitely nothing that I'm gonna not use. Um, strong as a cover, strong as a cover. I love the way that you have her wrapping her whole self with the fabric. So her jacket becomes the background because of how her arms are. Her jacket becomes the background. You cropped it in such a way that like, I'm going to do that right now. It's this. I'm making my head the background or my sweater. So good, Stephen. So, so, so good. So good. I love the head angle. The light is inspired. The open mouth. I mean, again, you, when you work with professional models, you can definitely tell the difference when you're shooting pro models versus your friend who thinks she's cute. It's a big difference. Yes or yes. And Steven's last shot, great shot, great light, great mood. Steven, this is mean, like this is dirty, you know, just a dirty, dirty shot. So strong, so strong. Guys, you feeling it? This is Steven's last picture, but guess what? I'm tasked to pick. Mr. Cheong Lin's best photo. That's now what I have to do. I have to pick his best photo. My word. But I got it already. I mean, they're all fire, man. Jesus. But your best from this set? Jesus! Wow, Steven. Wow. I'm going to call it this one. Steven... This is your best photo right here. Absolutely fire. Absolutely fire. And a close second right here. A close second. Come on. Absolutely, absolutely your best photo, Steven. Guys. I like to award photos of the week for those who choose to submit. You know, it's not it's not um, an easy thing for everybody to have the courage to submit photography. By the way, two hour live stream, two hours. It's what happens when you do a show and review show and then review photos. So usually I do a show or review photos today. Special bonus episode. I put both of them in one. I am going to choose today's best photo. And I am basing this on pure inspiration. I'm also basing this on like the level of photography that I know. And also I'm basing this on um, 
the fact that this photographer has never won photo of the week. So in order to spread around the love, I am awarding photo of the week to a photographer they call Sebastian K. Let's go, baby. You win photo of the week with this photo right here, Sebastian. Photo of the week, my guy. I know that you guys are like, oh my God, e-friend, holy shit, Stephen Chung Lin. Know that e-friend, he's been making photography at this level almost for the whole time that he's been watching me. In order for Steven Chong Lin to win photo of the week, he has to make photos that are even better than those ones because everybody here gets graded or judged against themselves. Nobody is being judged against anybody else here. I'm judging you against you. So I know that Steven is capable of that level of work. And in fact, I expect it. If it's, if it's lower than that, then me and Steven have a conversation. So Steven is maintaining his high level of standards. Sebastian, on the other hand, did something new. Sebastian shot something he had never shot before. And Sebastian pushed his photography into new realms. And that's why Sebastian has won photo of the week. Yay, Sebastian. <laughs> Let's go. So. If you want to have your photos be considered for photo of the week, if you want to have your photos reviewed, you have to join the Discord. The Discord yes yes. is like the place. Honestly, my Discord is so poppin'. It's by far the most happening photography Discord that there is out there. Like, let's just look like since the last time I looked last, this is my discord it never stops it just goes on and on and on and this is just the chatting channel and oh guess what i just zoomed back two days just two days and that's just one channel and look at all the different channels that we have going on here join my discord that's how you submit photos it's how you put your photos up for review if you want to be considered for photo of the week you have to submit to the Discord. That was a two-hour episode. I hope it brought you value. There's nothing that I would like to see better than you get better with your camera, but you have to show up. I hope today brought you some value. I love you all. See you soon. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back Sunday at 2 p.m. for an exciting episode of Behind the Picture. Please leave a comment if you found value in today's episode. If you've made it to the end of this actual episode and you're not subscribed to this channel, know that subscribing, it's sort of how I get out to more people. If you're watching my content, I'm in your feed already. So no, really, you don't need to subscribe, but it is an amazing metric. Let's me know how I'm doing. If you want your photos reviewed, you have to become a member. I promise you, your $5 a month, I will give you back in spades with all kinds of amazing photography education. Thank you very much for watching. Chat controls my stream. Call your mom. <laughs>